ignores. Hello, welcome to live at Epifan. We are here at uh, Castle Birchall, uh, and today we wanted to bring you some exciting stuff. This is episode 61 of Live at Epifan, so it seemed appropriate to uh, sit around the pool. Yeah, I think it's, you know, it's a nice day to be outside. We're here, like you said, Castle Birchall. This is uh, George's backyard, actually. Yeah. George well, number two. Other George. Other George. I'm not quite this lucky. Other George is actually behind the camera. Wave. Hey, how's it going? Way over there. We are uh, here in Almont, Ontario, the home of Dr. James Naismith, yeah. who invented basketball. Exactly. For all of you Americans who didn't know, it's a Canadian game. Um, <laughs> but anyway, what are we doing here? Well, this is kind of our Epif Epifan Skunk Works uh, remote site, the black site. Yeah, so we do some extreme testing here. So we're going to do a number of things today um, around the pool, I guess. I don't know. We'll see. But uh, we wanted to go over the durability and rugged nature of some Epifan devices. Today, focusing on our AVIO capture card. Yeah, the AVIO uh, line of USB capture cards is sort of renowned for its high quality construction, you know, exactly. pro, pro quality uh, video capture, but also extremely rugged and durable. Exactly. So we wanted to have a little bit of fun with that today. We're going to run through a bunch of different tests. Hope you guys enjoy. As always, comment. We're only on YouTube today. Um, we did not stream to Facebook as we are out in the middle of nowhere, so our bandwidth is limited. Um, so we're only on YouTube. I hope everyone watching enjoys. Uh, like I said, please comment. We I are uh, monitoring comments, right? I am got the monitoring phone. comments. Um, so we're going to be uh, checking those periodically. And, uh, and we'd and like your input too. If there's things Absolutely. you'd like us to do in this extreme testing adventure, yes. please let us know because... Uh, if you have any ideas or scenarios that you might torture test a capture card, uh, please let us know and we will check that out. So, no further ado, let's jump in on the yeah, first test. Yeah, let's get to it. You're heading to get the AVIO, I'm, yes, right? I'm going to grab some gear and I'm, I will meet you in our test facility. I'm going to meet you out in the uh, testing lab. Yeah. Uh, we got to walk through George's house so everybody can just Bear with us for just a moment. It might get a little dark on the camera. It's actually a kind of a tricky filming day today because it is like direct sunlight, high contrast, um, light and shadow. It's got to be about oh, 25 degrees today, which in Canadian temperature is quite warm. And uh, here we are. This is the front testing location. and. Uh, we have it set up for a variety of tests. Basically what we want to do is make sure that these things work after some, uh, some rugged use, let's say. So we're going to wait for George. He's grabbing the device right now. I think he should, oh, there he is. Yeah, I got it right here, Dan. Uh, I'll pass it down to you. Okay, thanks. Oh, I didn't catch it, man. That was a tough toss. Well, if you check it out, I mean, it still looks pretty good. There's a couple little, Couple little paint scuffs, but nothing too major. Hey, George. Here. Oh, sorry about that. How did that go? You know what? Oh. <laughs> that took. There's no paint in this. Thing. Yeah, <laughs> like I mean, there's might be wow. like a little tiny paint chip, but that's about it. If that was an iPhone, it'd be broken in half. <laughs> okay. So, well. All right. Well, let's. The big test is: does it still work? Yes, so, that is the question. So we're going to go back here into our testing station. What we have set up here is actually a Sony A6300 here. And this is going to be our test camera. We're running it via HDMI into the uh, capture card, which George just plugged in. Um, the camera here. Um, should I reboot this? Yeah, let's just make sure that one's on. Okay, I'm turning it on right now. Oh, you know what? It's saying internal temperature too high, allow it to cool. <laughs> Gotta nice. bring this in out of the sun. Well, we said it was a hot day. That's, uh, that's definitely what's happening. I can tell you that Windows is definitely detecting the device. So um, it's just a matter of getting a, a signal through on it here. So okay, I'm, reboot I'm rebooting the camera. That, uh, you can grab one of the laptops. Take his laptop with you. Yeah, so for any of you who may not remember, we've complained about the A6300 before with overheating issues. Turns out when you stick it in the sun, uh, that only gets worse. Um, so let's see if we can get a signal out of it. Dan, maybe just check that HDMI cable. Okay. Make sure we're there. 
And we're back out. Let's see. I'm going to try this one more time. Let me get a shot of George here. Camera to camera. So interesting. This is an interesting, unexpected result that I'm currently not getting a signal, but I'm not sure if that's, that's our camera camera's or fault or not. Why don't you run and grab uh, one of those three laptops that's in the back? So yep. for this test on the laptop side, I'm just using the Windows camera application, uh, which is actually a really great, simple capture tool for Windows to use with AVIO. Um, essentially, it can let you take snapshots, do video recording. It's built to work with the webcam that's built into your laptop. Of course, AVIO works just like a webcam does. So it's a great, very easy to use tool. Um, it's been built into Windows since Windows 8.1. So Windows 8, Windows 10, uh, it's a great little tool um, to work with there. Uh, Dan's going to plug in a laptop here, see if we can get a signal coming out just to confirm whether or not we have any functionality. We might have killed it. I mean, that was a pretty good It was. I mean, the casing held second, up really second good. Story, but, uh, so. We'll have to see. Okay, I'll see if I have any video that we can play here as well. Okay. I can see second display connected. Okay. But I'm not getting anything here. So we might have... Killed it on the first shot. Was that wow. too violent? It might have been. Well, this is why we have more than one device, because we're going to double check. So I'm going to switch to my backup device here and see what happens. I'm still not getting video, so I don't think it's the AVIO's fault. You want to try it on my computer? Let's just try rebooting this here. So the computer that we grabbed from the office here that George is struggling with is actually the slowest, oldest computer we could find. <laughs> um, but perhaps well, it's giving us some trouble. Oh, there we go. Okay. Got something there. Maybe it's the cable. It might be. So I'm going to switch back to our dropped device. This is where we find out. Yeah, I think we're having a cable problem of all things. Do we have another cable we can grab? It's a good my question. Cable. Yeah, we do. Uh, if you look behind my TV, I have to give you a chance. Okay, I'm going to grab a fresh cable. So this is causing a little bit of delay. Apologize for that. But uh, maybe while we just look at some of those delays, I'll just check comments and questions here, see if anybody has any of those coming in. Because um, we want to make sure that uh, we get to all of those as much as possible. I don't see anything coming in at the moment. I'm not sure what happened with our... Uh, with our cable here today. So our next test, um, we wanted to check the crushability of an AVIO. Um, so I think this device is still indeed working. So we're just going to uh, continue to use that one until we find a way to kill it. And uh, I don't think that we've reached that point yet. So just grab um, this t cable from George's Apple TV. All right, let's see what happens this time. And I'm still not getting a signal. Okay, this is very strange. Wanna try it on this computer? I had it working on this device a second ago. Okay, so we are getting it. So I think maybe this one, well, we'll have to check it more thoroughly later, but uh, I think maybe that drop test might have shaken it. It might, it might have, it might have done a little too much damage. You did pitch it from the second story. Yeah, it's true. It hit pretty hard. It did hit the driver okay, well, pretty hard. Okay, well, you know what? So let's 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 continue the testing. Well, this one this is, is working. extreme testing, right? This is extreme testing. We knew sooner or later something was going to go uh, right. <laughs> uh, so this one is working. So a high impact from two stories. 
might not, a not good idea. survive. So what's our next test? Well, I mean, the next test we want to do is try some crushing. We tried the, the high, high, extremely high heights. Extreme it's impact. Try, it's trying to try, you know, seeing how much pressure this thing can take. So you okay. got your motorcycle here. Do. Let's grab the AVIO and we're going to put it right here flat on the pavement. There we go. Get it nicely positioned. Now George is, as you know, he likes to talk about it a lot. He's a motorcycle guy. He's driving the Honda here. What is it, the 800? 500. It's a 500? Just my, uh, my little bike. So he's got the 500. This is his, his mini motorcycle. And we're going to try to run over the AVIO a couple times. Yeah, so we'll, uh, we'll see what happens here. I mean, this thing, wet, weighs about 450 pounds. Okay. So we'll see how that goes. On your marks. Get set. Go. Oh. Right over it. I saw it kind of like move around a bit. Why don't you hit it one more time, George? Let's do one more. Yeah, right over. All right, so there you go. I mean, it doesn't look very worse for wear. It definitely actually got some pretty good pavement marks into the backside. So how are we looking with that? I mean, it, I don't know if you can tell, but you can see where it's been kind of ground into the pavement. There's more marks on this than when it flew off the second story. Let's give it a shot. Let's see All if right. it works. So here's the, here's the question. Are we going to go two for two on this? I think it's going to survive that. I mean, it didn't look too, didn't look like it's. And it works. Okay, should we show this? Yeah, so George, if you come in a little closer here, you can see we are, screen, uh, but... we are capturing across here um, from one laptop to the other. So I'm just showing a roll video of, uh, of some of the stuff we covered last week with the fashion show coverage. So success on that one. So we have a 50% success rate right now. I'd like well, to try a drop test again, though, because I'm actually surprised, like, that drop test, you know. Well, we also know 450 pounds won't do it. So what about something maybe a couple tons? Okay, let's get something heavier on there. Well, All right. We can use so, my car. Okay, that's a good it's one. It's a bit heavier than your bike. I'll go yeah, get it. Some solid Detroit steel. We'll uh, <laughs> see what happens with that. Um, let's see here. It's a good spot to position this. Let's, uh, let's bring this down here. Dan's going to have to line this up. Interesting. I'm going to put AVIO right there. You're going to have to guide me a bit. So we'll probably have to get you to back up and come back in, Dan. All right, we're going to move this right there. So come in this way, Dan. This way, this way a little bit. Oh, I we're can on feel the edge it. of it there. Am I right on Sitting top of on it? the edge of it. So we'll see. Dan backs up a little bit and tries to straighten up a little more. Oh, grinding it into the pavement there. All right, come back again, Dan. Let's just go pretty much straight. Just come straight come at straight it. Straight at it. I'm just going to cruise right over. Oh, yeah, there we go. Back up one more time, maybe. That's perfect. Oh, yes. Okay. Oh, okay. Let me go park. Well, let's check our dam. <laughs> We've got some uh, some pretty good scratches on here now. The paintwork is uh, pretty scratched up, but it is not deformed. It is not twisted. Uh, the metal casing has not buckled at all. We're just missing a little more paint. So. There's your damage. There's my damage. I could feel it under the wheel when I you was could feel it. turning. I could kind well, of feel it yeah, yeah. under I the mean, power steering. We crushed more pavement with the corner of this than this thing took damage. So we'll right. uh, see if it works. Let's see what, what does a Ford Escape weigh? Do you know? Um, Probably about 3,700 Yeah, pounds. I mean, it's not light. No. We're not using the lightest materials. Okay. One, two, three, magic. It's still powering up. So that's a great sign. Still detected, still working. There it is. It is awesome. working. Let's get uh, camera verification. So no, everybody knows that we're. Yeah, we're not cheating on this one. Okay, so 
It can withstand being run over by a motorcycle, and it can withstand being crushed by a Ford. By a Ford SUV. Does that so. mean AVIO is more durable than a Ford? Well, it's at least as durable <laughs> as a Ford. And there you can see the screen is. Playing. Yeah. Yeah, it's that's, very sorry, reflective. we got like the most glared screen possible for this test. But it is capturing and it looks good actually. Yeah. The quality looks spot on. Perfect. Okay, right. so. So the, what do we, what else can we do to this thing? That's, well, I have an idea actually. Since we are Canadian, oh, there we there's go. only one way to deal with a puck shaped item in Canada. It is a little bit puck shaped. It's <laughs> not round, but. And of course, Stanley Cup playoffs are about to start which is also an interesting thing. Who you got for the winner in the playoffs? Well, you like Vegas? I don't like either team, but the finals are gonna be on in Vegas while I'll, some of us are at Infocom. Okay. So that could be interesting. You might be able to check out a uh, Stanley Cup final game. So for that reason, we might... Uh, How come I get the big net and you get the small one? Ah, just because. We might, ah, <laughs> we might have to go with, uh, with Vegas as the, uh, as the pick. Oh. <laughs> Oh, it skipped right nice over. Tumble. Oh man, that sounded bad. <laughs> it was like <laughs> that was, was a nice tumble. We'll, we'll see. Okay, well, one more shot. Yeah. Well, Jumps that was some more bit. impact testing. How's it looking? You know, it's got some more scratches on it, but ports look it's fine. It's not bad. It yeah, kinda, I noticed like the ports are a little bit recessed on the USB they side are. and, and on, exactly. on the. DVI connector here, it's recessed as well. So exactly. there's no way that port is actually hitting anything. Right, exactly. That's an important part of the design is we make sure that they're full size ports on both ends, you both USB and DVI. They're, they're very durable, they're recessed. So full size ports torts. are much more durable than micro size. Absolutely. Absolutely. One of my biggest pet peeves is devices that use micro USB. Um, you know, for example, external hard drives these days, it's hard to find one without micro USB and it's yeah. such a terrible connector it breaks very easily yeah. um, so we don't use them okay. so let's give this one a shot that was like three or four pretty good it was tumbling passes, around there tumbling on around the driveway so let's let's see how we go it's powering up uh oh it's detected and it's capturing it is, it is. it's still capturing look at that that thing is starting to look pretty scuffed up actually it's looking like it went through a war but it's still running. Yeah. So we are, like we said, we are monitoring chat right now. So uh, George is going to pull it up on his phone. Let me just take, take a look. look here and see if we have any if questions. Anyone has any in. comments or ideas for what we should do to try to destroy this thing? Anybody? No. Well, I don't have anything here, but maybe Lisa, if you don't mind checking to see if I'll there's any comments. I'll check on my uh, on my phone. I'll, uh, What's going to be our next test? I think we need to... I think to, we need uh, to abuse it a bit harder. Okay, so we got a whole bunch of comments coming in. Okay. Um, actually, there's a question here from Peter early on. He was asking, does the AVIO do all the heavy lifting as far as transcoding? Maybe you can no. explain how that works. Yeah, so AVIO is not doing any encoding. Um, it is a, a, a uncompressed, essentially lossless capture device. Um, and that's important for many of our customers in industrial fields and medical fields where compression is the enemy. Okay. Um, so our devices not do any compression. So it does rely on software on the com host computer to do that compression. The nice part about that is that that compression is then more controllable. So if you need extremely high bit rates that maybe a hardware compressor isn't gonna offer you, you don't have to worry about that with AVIO. You know you're starting with a totally uncompressed signal uh, and then you can kind of do as you please with it from there. Excellent. So you want to preserve the quality of your image? Absolutely. Then, then it's, it's going to do that. Exactly. Um, let's try to fire a few, through a few more questions sure. really quick. So uh, Amagrav is asking, is it normal for the white paint of the AVIO HD to chip off? Well, I mean, I guess if you're doing what if we're doing, if you it, run it might, over it's with a little the car. scuffed up. Um, yeah. But, um, but I mean, we have a bunch of these kicking around the office and they hold up pretty well. They do. I mean, I've seen one or two where sometimes the paint just on the edge yeah. is chipped. Um, but it's, yeah, I mean, it you know, doesn't you, affect the device. It, it's aluminum underneath. It's you know, not, you could do some cool anymore. mods and do your own uh, paint job on the you outside. Could. Of that you could, you um, Scott, could. <laughs> Scott's watching, of course. Good to see you, Scott. He's saying he'll take that one. I'm guessing that's <laughs> maybe the one we tossed off the roof. <laughs> yeah, uh, Race TV Live really is asking about what system we're using for this broadcast. So we're actually using Pearl 2, as we, we usually do for this show. Yep. We've got it hooked up in George's hallway. And the reason everything looks so portable right now 
is actually because George B is on the C100, and we actually have a fiber HDMI cable. So. Yes, we do. It's about 100 feet long, uh, thin gauge fiber HDMI cable that's great for these. They're not cheap cables, but they are great for this type of setup where you don't want to drag around 100 pounds of cable, but you need 100 feet of it. Uh, the fiber cables are a great option. Yeah. And we see other people saying, oh, car versus AVIO. Bunch of someone wants us to drop it in the pool. Maybe we can try that. In case you want to get rid of these crash test dummies, I would give them a home and give them a place where they can rest and recover. That's from Dr. Stefan. So great. Glad you're enjoying Appreciate the show, that. Dr. <laughs> Stefan. Uh, Palo Alto is watching. We've got a Perfect. whole bunch of people. So let's get to some more All testing. Right. So I think we got to step it up. Okay, yeah. We got to try to um, destroy this one. And I'm going to be. So I have an idea. Yeah. I, I think it will kill it. Okay. I, I think it will kill it. I want to hit it with a hammer. Okay. Awesome. So and you've got one right here. Yeah, we, we kind of thought about this earlier, thought maybe it was a bit nuts. Let's give George a second to get the shot here. Um, we thought maybe this would be a little bit nuts to do this. Now, um, I think this- What, are you gonna smash it with a sledgehammer on top of a cinder block? Yeah, well, I mean, I don't that's wanna- gonna, That's gonna, I gotta think that's gonna I don't wanna it. hurt George's poor driveway here. <laughs> I mean, if it was my driveway, I wouldn't care, but uh, right. this is gonna be the- uh, I'm gonna get back, just I don't want any pieces of- as one of my favorite YouTubers says, safety squints engaged. <laughs> yeah, I got my safety goggles on too. All right. Well, like I say, I fully expect this to die. Oh, oh. man. <laughs> it's completely <laughs> That is flat. It's, it's, you flattened it, man. And the cap went somewhere. It went over here. There. <laughs> okay. Well, let's see. You popped the cap. The cap did come off. That was a good hit. I mean, we, we got to show it first. Come on. This is, uh, I mean, <laughs> it's flat. Let's be honest, guys. That was a sledgehammer. So, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I've got to think that the PCB is broken, you know, right? It's bent, but I don't think it's broken. It's bent just a little as the, the guides and the casing did bend a little. But, uh, I mean, you can see exactly where the hammer hit right but here. But this cap stayed on. The connectors look, the other cap. This look one intact. Sort of popped off. Hey, you know what? There's only one way to find out, right? It's powering up. It's detected. No way. Oh. Is it? Uh, no, I don't think we're actually getting a signal. But it powered up. I don't know, George, if you could see this, but it did power up and detect, and it does think that it's acquiring a signal. So maybe the DVI connector is a little bit off now. <laughs> yeah. Or possibly even shorting as it's, as it's pressing into the casing. But the USB controller side is 100% working. So can we chalk that up to a, uh, a narrow death? Try plugging it in one more time maybe. Yeah, you know, it's the kind of thing where I kind of want I gotta wanna... think that killed it, man. I mean, it pancaked. It did. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I wasn't sure what to expect with that one. All right, well, we killed one. So it can't survive a direct sledgehammer hit on top of a cinder block. No, but I would certainly hope that no one intends to uh, use it in an environment where pressing it or slamming it with a sledgehammer is part of normal use. Um, by the way, warranty is void. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, don't try this at so, home. The good news is we have more backup devices. Okay, and this is actually a different color device. What yes. is this one for people who don't know? So this is the AVIO 4K. Uh, this is sort of AVIO HD's brother. Uh, not necessarily bigger, it's physically the same size, still USB 3.0. Mm -hmm. Has a native HDMI input instead of the DVI and it can capture up to 4K. Okay. So with this device, you could do a lot more from a 4K camera or maybe even a PS4 Pro with a 4K output or any number of those things. The same durable casing, um, so I would expect it to, to deal with things pretty much the same way. Yeah. In fact, this device is slightly different internally and may have done better in the sledgehammer test. Yeah, okay, and why is that? So this one has a heat sink on the inside because oh, of the 4K, it, the... it does get a little warmer. And so it has a bigger heat sink on the inside that may have prevented the I same mean, amount of Can we try another impact crush. test of some kind? Maybe we could like drop a rock on it or something. We could try. I mean, we could just toss it up in the Beamwell air. Beamwell was asking happens. if we can try running it in a steamy bathroom. He's seriously interested for gigs in South America and other humid places. You know what? It is actually really humid today. Yeah. Um, here in Ottawa, Canada, it's maybe not as quite as hot as South and Central America, 
but it does get extremely humid. That's am, why we're standing in the shade. Right I am now. sweating buckets right now because of how humid it is. Um, you just can't tell, luckily. Uh, but it's got to be at least 80, 90 percent humidity yeah. today. It's pretty gross. Um, so well. That's a hum bit of a humidity test. Maybe we can do a little bit more in a minute. Should we make sure that one's working first? Sure, let's try let's this. Just make sure that before we test it that- I don't need that HDMI adapter anymore with native, uh, native HDMI. We'll plug this guy in, detected, running, and okay, captured. Okay, so this one's running. So if so. you guys have ideas how you'd like to see us torture this grabber, ABIO I mean, 4K. let us know. Do you have any ideas? There's lots of tools around here. We could- uh, There are tools. We could try um, something. Let's see. It's a pogo stick. Can we bounce yeah. on it with a pogo stick? No, that might be dangerous. Yeah, that might. Not. I'm not even. What sure about we drop one of these rocks on it? We can do that. Just put it on top, and we'll just maybe drop a rock on it. All right. So this isn't a sledgehammer. No, but uh, it's a pretty, pretty good sized rock. I'd say that's like a eight or nine pound. Feels maybe like a nine pound rock. It's got some edges to it. Okay, here we go. Three, two, one. Oh, it took a pretty good hit. Took a good hit. It's a little dented. It's, it's a little dented, good. but you know what? I don't think that's going to stop anything. But that's a pretty good dent right there. Yeah, that's all right. It's, it's bent up pretty good. Let's try it. Let's try it. So seven. What is that? Nine pound rock. Actually, let's take a look at the rock. I can see there's a a little bit of AVIO on, <laughs> on the, rock. the rock. We're just adding some color to George's front yard. That's all. Yeah. And what do we have here? Powered up again. Interesting. So nine pound rock, maybe not? Maybe not. We'll have to try this again. So the laptop, the other laptop is noticing that a monitor is being unplugged and unplugged. So that's a good sign, but we aren't getting an active capture. Yeah, it's like detecting it. It's the same thing yeah. with the other heavy impacts. Yeah, so that's an interesting, uh, Interesting result. I'm just, oh, it's actually working. I relaunched Windows camera and it's working. So it is working. Yeah, so it is actually working. There we have it. Why don't we uh, show that it is still going. So we have the blue LED blinking away there. So the right laptop is our source, but the left yeah. laptop here is... Um, and we are capturing. I just had to What are you using for capture right now, by the way? Windows camera. I explained that a little earlier. Again, everyone always asks us, you know, what's one of the simplest, easiest pieces of software to use with AVIO? Windows camera and QuickTime on Mac OS okay. are probably the two, they're built in, yeah. so they're super easy to use. So it's just generic, plug it in, Exactly, pop you can it open. do some basic video recording, you can do some snapshots, yeah. so it's, it, they're Do we want to show tools. the actual damage? I don't know yeah, if we got a close we'll, uh, up of the damage on this one. We'll disconnect this and take a look at this. Just stay in the shadow so that it doesn't have of, to. In uh, terms of AVIO versus the rock. Um, this is a pretty it's good, pretty good uh, dent. indent. It's a pretty good dent. Right on the corner there. The paint held up pretty well though. So that's not bad, that's not bad. Okay, so what are we now? How many tests have we done? We did roof, roof, roof broke. Seems to, Seems I'm, not to. Totally I'm not totally convinced on that one. I'm gonna, I'm gonna play with Maybe that Maybe we'll one try more. it again after. So roof, we did uh, motorcycle survived. Car survived. survived. Hockey survived. survived. Sledgehammer. Uh, sledgehammer, not so much. Yeah, you hit it pretty hard and I it was, did. you pancaked it. It did, did not survive yeah. that. Uh, but dropping a, a, a rather rock. large rock on it, on I top of the center, center block, yeah. I would survive survived that rock, so I'm kind of impressed. Okay, I think we need to step it up and try some more, right. even more extreme testing. Well, people uh, were we asking do? about humidity. Yeah. Someone else asked about maybe throwing it in the pool. What do you think about that? In the pool? I, there's no way it's going to survive. It's an electronic device. I, well, you know, you never know. I don't okay. know. Okay. Well... George actually, camera George, has his swim trunks on right now. He does because it's hot. I'm wearing uh, Kevlar jeans. I think he jeans, was planning on so. jumping in the pool, but maybe George, instead of jumping in the pool after the live show, you'd be willing to do it right now? That's the camera nod, right. yes. Yeah, so. so Dan, you want to grab the camera from I'll me. grab the camera from George. All right. And let's uh, hand it off to me. Let's go around back. Now George isn't mic'd up, so he's going to just be like kind of silent. And, Hi, everybody. Okay. That's my mic right there. <laughs> oh, there we go. I'm just getting the. ND We're now filter transitioning adjusted. to the George and George show. Um, so, what do you think about that? I am hot. Yeah. It's, get, I don't think it's going to work. Well, you don't know. I mean, you're right. We don't know. Okay. Well, let's try it. I'll admit I'm not that confident either. But you know what? It's for the people. Okay. Let's go to the back. Let's go to the back. Got to walk through the house again. So, I'm going to try and pull up some comments here. My comment system doesn't appear to be working, guys. So, I apologize for that. Um, 
I'll try and refresh it again here. No, it's not working. So, so actually, while we're passing by right here, I'll actually just show you. Here's our mobile streaming setup. So we've got, it's a little dark, sorry for that, but we've got Perl 2 here. It's running. We've got a, a couple laptops which aren't actually doing anything right now, but really all, all that we're using for the stream right now is Perl 2. We've got it on a little table in the hallway here. All right, I'm going to try and pull up the, uh, the comments here. Okay, I'm going to go um, ahead out to the backyard because it's, we're pretty dark in the house right now. Let's see. Steamy bathroom, we talked about that one. Um, let's see. Tie it to the motorcycle and pull it over the street, break the speed limit. Um, funny enough, we're in a residential neighborhood and there's a school across the street, so I'm not gonna do that one, but maybe that's something we could do a follow-up test with. I think there's some more time. testing that we wanted to do that we can't do here, but. Absolutely, uh, but that one just due to where we are that, uh, that we don't wanna do. Uh, throw it against the wall, that's another good suggestion, similar to, uh, to tossing it on the driveway. Um, let's see. Um, pull the uh, video and USB cable sideways until they break and see if the ports get damaged. Real world stuff. You know, that's a great one, uh, Beam Well. That's, that's an excellent suggestion. Certainly that becomes more of a concern with HDMI because it can torque so much. I've run into that with Canon cameras frequently and it drives me crazy. With the AVIO HD, because it's a DVI-I connector with the screw terminals, if they're screwed in, it's not going to go anywhere. Um, and that's one of the reasons why we use that connector, even though it's primarily designed to capture HDMI signals. We use the DVI connector for its durability. Um, so let's take a look here. Uh, leave it in the sun for a bit like the camera. That's a great one, Stephen. Maybe we'll, uh, we'll try that one as well. Um, uh, yeah, we got Euro Victor saying, do it in the pool. <laughs> well, the people demand, George. The people demand. They're demanding in the pool. Let me try to get a shot here. Okay. okay. Almost ready. Wait for it. The people are ready. Are you ready, Graham? We're ready to rock and roll. Let's see your best cannonball. It's more of a dive, but oh, I'll take that was it. a beautiful dive, actually. It was a great dive. Man. So well, that's underwater is. quite a bit. <laughs> wow. So that. Uh, <laughs> it's wet. And how warm is the water today? 58. 58 <laughs> degrees for our American viewers. In Canada, that's known as normal. <laughs> so, yeah, we're going to dry it off a little bit. We're going to give it a test. Um, so we'll meet you back around front. George isn't going to walk wet through his own house, because who would do that? We're not animals. <laughs> okay, let's head back to the front. Um, Adam is asking, put it on a stove burner or throw it in the freezer. Um, the freezer would take a little bit too long. Um, but that's a good question. I actually, you know, if I brought my camp stove, I would have been game for the stove. Um, that one will be an interesting one. Partially because you don't know what's going to melt when we're dealing with that. Um, so let's just go around here. Oh, a little snag there. Yep, we'll just make sure. Oh, there we go. Oh, our cable. there's George back at the front. All right, so let's take a look. I think we actually just lost signal. Check your HDMI cable. Okay. No, I think we're back. Okay, sorry about that guys. Uh, we lost signal for a second there as we were transitioning through the house, but I think we are okay now. Let's, uh, okay, doesn't, so you got doesn't it doesn't feel wet. Is it dripping? Like no, no. I mean, I can see there's some moisture, but it seems okay. Okay, this is, a, this is a real world test. Here's your high humidity test. Is this how wet it gets? 100% humidity. <laughs> <laughs> it is powering up, but not initializing. So one of the things that you can do as a great diagnostic on an AVIO device is look at the LED color. Um, if it's blinking blue, means it's in USB 2 mode. It's blinking, or sorry, USB 3 mode. It's blinking green, it's in USB 2 mode. If we're getting a solid red light, that indicates we're getting power, but that the host system is not detecting it or initializing it properly. So I might give this one more try here, but it looks like something on the inside uh, didn't enjoy that swim as much as George did. Um, it's getting power, so that's interesting, but um, it, doesn't, it doesn't want to initialize. 
So, so that's a fail. Um, but I wonder, what if we, can we dry this out more, do you think? Like, actually, if we take Adam's idea of the stove, what if maybe we try to dry it out with a little bit of heat? What do you think about that, Dan? I mean, it could work. Let me swap off the camera again. I mean, how would we dry that out exactly? Well, we're in a garage. There's got to be something. Um, what's this? A little clay pot here, maybe barbecue <laughs> lighter. Do okay. one of those. Well, why don't we just put it in the clay pot and set the whole thing on fire? <laughs> okay. Okay. Where where should we put this? Where's this? Let's just set, here? just light it up. You, you want know? it in the sun or the shadow, George? In the shade. Try and pull it back into the shade. Okay. So. Okay. I mean, well, it's already not working. I don't think this is going to help it any. But. Hey, listen. They say put your phone in a bag of rice to dry it out. We're putting it in a bucket of paper. What's what's the difference? Sounds like it's the same to me. Um, maybe this is a bit crazy, but I'm also curious just to see what happens. Um, let's try and get some paper. Oh, there we go. All right, it's flaming up now. So this isn't quite a stove, Adam. I apologize, but uh, it's the best we could do on short notice. Um, but let's take a look here. Marta was saying blow dry it. That's too boring. <laughs> We want it to be a little more interesting than that. I mean, that's what most people would do is, right, when you get your device wet, you put it in a bag of rice, and then you leave it overnight, right? Isn't that what you're that supposed to do? That is a common thing. And, and generally speaking, a lot of electronics, when they do get wet or damp, as long as you dry them out, give them a chance to dry out before using them again, they'll often recover. Now, I did try and power this on before, uh, before trying to dry that's it out. That's what may have killed it, right? It might have. You know, we'll... Uh, We'll see what's, uh, what's going to happen here. Um, but I'm also curious just to see what the paint and the casing happens with a little <laughs> bit of flame applied. I can't imagine um, this is going to like fix it. <laughs> Euro Victor seems to think this will fix it. Okay, well, so I guess. He's I guess in the same school of thought that, uh, that I, I am. We'll find out. So, so the, the flame has ended. All that right. thing is probably very hot, so be careful. It's a little bit of paper on there. But you know what? That USB port looks pretty solid doesn't look uh, like it's melted at all there's some discoloring on the white paint yeah there's definitely uh, some like it's singed it's heavily singed yeah you can see it got a little toasty is here it's it a good question no it's still pretty hot is yeah it? it's, all right be well, careful uh, touching it we're gonna do this carefully with these very scientific tongs maybe okay it's power it's it got powered power. up so it's no worse than it was but yeah. it's still not initializing. We do have an LED, but... So it's no better and no worse than it was after It doesn't matter that the HDMI isn't plugged in. That LED indicates that Exactly. It's yeah, so it's indicating we are getting power, but not initializing. Okay. So it didn't fix it. Okay, so... But it didn't make it worse either. So when I call into uh, QA and say, or tech support and say... Well, that I intend to put this on their desk. <laughs> Like, I don't know what happened to it, guys. So, can we talk about, like, there's a lot of devices that are coming out now that have waterproof features, that have, I think I've heard, IP67 rated. Uh, what does that mean, and what, what so, actually qualifies a device to be waterproof? Yeah, so, and that's the tough part, is that IP67 is probably one of the most common standards you hear about. I have a Galaxy S7, or Galaxy S8. It's IP67, uh, or actually IP68 now. Essentially the same thing. But generally, it means they are resistant to water and dust intrusion. Um, it does, mean, does not mean that they are proof, but they will survive uh, about 30 feet submerged for up to usually 20, 30 minutes under okay. that certification, but not necessarily longer. Okay. And same thing, dust, it'll take certain particulate size matter for a certain amount of time. Um, so for day-to-day -day use, something that's going to be IP67 or IP68 certified, like many cell phones are now, is totally fine. If you get caught in a rainstorm with your cell phone, you'll be fine. Um, AVIOs, it's still pretty warm. Uh, AVIOs are not rated that, and that's one of the reasons we wanted to experiment with this today, is to see, to see what happens. Um, one of the reasons I'll point out that this is still quite a bit, quite a bit warm, <laughs> is that uh, we use the aluminum casing on AVIOs, one for durability, which I think we've shown, but also because they, are, they function as a heat sink to make sure that wow. the open air around the device is helping to keep it cool. Right. So even though the casing may be warm to the touch during operation, 
that's really an indicator that it's doing its job as a heat sink. Mm -hmm. um, and we do get that question a lot is, yeah. hey, the AVIO is warm in my hand, is that okay? Yes, that's absolutely. Normal, right? that's, that's that shows that the heat sink is working, right? Exactly. So it's starting to cool down here, but uh, it's still a, yeah, it's not too bad. All it's right, well, bad. I think we've done all the major tests we had thought of. If there's anything else we wanted to do quickly, I guess we could. Well, let me, uh, let me take a look at the comments here and let's see, uh, let's see what's happening, happening here in the comments. Um, let's see. Test that one the next show. I bet that would work again. We could try one more test again. I mean, we the, have the thing that we had trouble with was the heavy, heavy impact. It survived the, the light impact. impact of a rock, the lighter impact of like an eight or nine pound rock. But that's true. Didn't survive sledgehammer. No. Uh, let's see. Some people saying test it again the next show. I bet you it would work again. That's a great point, and we will do that. <laughs> yeah. we'll, we'll make a point of doing that next week. Um, Adam's saying, George's repair shop mostly involves fire. Yes, it does. Yeah, if it um, stops working, light it on fire. That might help. You know, I don't know if it's necessarily a functionality test or if we want to attempt it. We thought about trying to shoot them. Yeah. Um, again, not the most ideal environment. Yeah, there's um, a bunch. I, we're not going to show it, but we're like right across the street from a yeah, there's, elementary there's a lot of school. Kids. Um, and that's not really an ideal environment. Uh, for, but uh, that could be another video, maybe. So it could be. I, I mean, don't know if, if you we guys have ideas that maybe we can't do right now because of safety reasons. Maybe we can. We do have some suggestions. You drive a power tool through it. I mean, if we used a drill bit that would puncture the casing, it would absolutely kill it. There's no question. It would go straight through the board. Uh, that's why we didn't do that. Yeah. Um, we could use something in the garage here. I thought about sacrificing my blender to go for a will it blend. <laughs> um, but I don't think it'll blend. I like my blender too much, so I didn't want to uh, yeah. sacrifice that. Um, so anyway, guys, today was mostly about trying to show off the durability. Um, I think we've done that quite a bit. Um, maybe if you guys have uh, any other ideas about things we can try in the future, we'd love to hear them. You know, some people mentioned the day-to-day -day realities of humid environments. Um, you know, those sorts of things are, are things we'd like to explore and test and, and verify. Um, so anyway, I think that'll probably wrap it up. We're at almost 45 minutes on today's show, which is uh, a pretty good one. Um, I think it's time for a cheers and a beers. So we did the hold my beer, watch this first. We'll do the beer second, I guess. And a cheers to the cheers to AVIO, AVIO that swam and, sur and went and through fire and exactly. did all of the extreme tests we wanted to. Exactly. So. so here's to that. Thanks, everyone, for joining us. We'll see you next week uh, with something else. Yeah. So, I mean, I don't think we have an episode lined up for next week. So we're always looking for ideas. If there's something that you'd like us to do on the show, let us know. And until next Thursday, this is Dan and George signing off. See you guys.